Hello out there, this is Wake Angel 2001, and it has been a while since I did a good old-fashioned toy review, right? So, for the first time ever, I went out and got myself a proper Jack Pacific Mario figure. Now, this is just a very basic Super Mario. He comes with a superstar. As you can see, the back of the packaging indicates which wave it comes in. It's the one that had Piranha Plant in it. Um, I believe this wave actually launched not too far away from when Piranha Plant was, was announced as a playable character for Smash. So um, I think they were trying to capitalize on it. But this is just a very basic one. It's not like the... Um, he's not the Super Mario Odyssey one. So he has no removable hat. And he doesn't have the realistic texture done on his, on his overalls. Although I will find it funny that on the box they show him with the open hand sculpt. While the actual figure has fists. I think they just recycled a picture of an older Mario variant for the packaging. Now I could just do a straight up review of this the normal way. But I always had a plan for whenever I broke down and got myself this figure. And that is, I wanted to give a good proper comparison with the SH Figuart Mario. A figure that I, that I bought myself only a few months before the first World of Nintendo Mario would come out. So, let's give them their day in the sun and decide, is it really worth spending the extra money to get this? Or is this every bit the Mario figure that anybody would ever need? Number one, the price tag. All right, so the first thing that we're going to compare, of course, is the price tag. Um, SH Figure Arts Super Mario retails for $19.99. You can still find him for that price in a Barnes & Noble or any comic book stores you happen to live near. I know for one thing, I've seen these for sale in Midtown Comics, and it's always $19.99. Um, there's also a more deluxe variant that comes with other things like a turtle shell, a pipe, and other stuff, but this is just the basic release. This one, on the other hand, costs $9. Uh, good old $8.99. So that's, um, to go from $20 to $9, it, this, this costs like basically 40% of the price tag. Well, a little bit more, like 45% of the price. So... This obviously is significantly cheaper. Plus, it's easier to find. I picked this one up at GameStop, but you could easily pick up the, pick up uh, World of Nintendo toys at basically any toy store. Um, so you can get it at Target. Um, depending on where you live, you might even be able to find them at Kmart's and stuff. But unless you live in Canada, you will not be able to find them at Toys R Us because you won't be able to find a Toys R Us. So in terms of price, what are you getting? Um, so let's, let's compare them, um, every aspect of them so that we can, uh, so that we can see is that extra 11 bucks a justified difference in price or would anyone just be better off with that? Number two, the packaging. Of course, the first thing that we're going to compare is the packaging. The SH Figure Art Mario comes in a very nice window box, which I talked about in his individual review. Um, displaying everything that he comes with, and the figure is prominently displayed as well. And on the back, you have some very nice um, display options, in addition to showing a, a picture of what the deluxe set looks like, which comes with Goomba, the pipe, all that stuff. Although, like, this is all that you actually get in the packaging. Um, the Jack Pacific one comes on a blister card, a uh, very standard action figure packaging for most uh, American toy releases. Has that official Nintendo licensed product seal, so you know you know that it got endorsement. And good old Jack Pacific, which I, I just remembered, also has the Sonic line now. Um, so I haven't seen any proper Sonic figures, just uh, Toy Fair announced Bendy's and a gimmick toy, which will be the first official toys of Mighty and Ray. But uh, hopefully, Jack Pacific will make proper Sonic the Hedgehog action figures so that we can actually have Sonic figures that can stand next to World of Nintendo. And yes, I really hope that they, that they go with full articulation and possibly even a 4-inch scale. Oh my god, I would love a 4-inch scale Sonic figure. Really, I would. So, of course, the SH figure art made by Bandai is going to win in terms of the packaging. I mean, this is a collector grade figure. This is just a toy that they expect to give to children. So, of course, we're going to have this one win this category. So let's move on to the next category. 
Number three, the included accessories. Yep, the first thing we're gonna we're gonna compare is what they come with. So Jack Pacific Mario comes with a thing, and Figure Art Mario comes with stuff. <laughs> yep. Uh, so basically, this Mario comes with a single accessory, which is the Superstar. You know, it's nice. It's just a cast star. I mean, I like how there's no obvious seam line or injection scar, so it's a very well-made little thing. And it has nicely painted on eyes. You know, nothing wrong with that. This is a nice little accessory. Of course, you gotta compete with the accessories that, that Figure Art Mario comes with, which includes the iconic mushroom, which is also, you know, very difficult to see any seam lines on there. I mean, if you look closely, you can kind of see it, but, you know, uh, no, no worse than any other toy that has um, injection molding. A little bit of a mar in, in the paint, but I think I might have accidentally scratched it when I took it out of the packaging. And, um, yeah. Plus, it comes with a question mark block. Uh, it's, it has a, a hole in the bottom, so you can stick it onto the transparent stick that the deluxe set comes with. Of course, it doesn't come with that. And, uh, you know, you can set that on top as if you just hit it. You also have a very nice ring with a va with a vac metalized treat. I said ring because I'm used to Sonic. You have a, a coin with a nice vac metalized treatment. Highly reflective. Look, you can actually see what's behind my camera. Can you, can you see me? Yeah, look. See my fingers? Yeah, look at that. That's my finger in there. Yeah. Um, and of course it can set on top of the box too. So yeah, that's, that's three things, very well made things, versus one thing. Alright, so, this, like I said, you can have a thing, or you can have stuff. So, of course the Figure Art Mario, even the basic release, has more accessories. So, yeah, he does win on that account. But now comes the nitty gritty. Let's compare the figures themselves. Number four, sculpt, paint, and articulation. Yep, first we're gonna go over the sculpt work and the paint job. So, um, <laughs> so if you, it, it might be easy to say that the, that the figure art wins because it's a collector grade figure, right? This is supposed to be better in this category. But let's give them a fair shake. Let's come nice and close. Uh, of course, there is a slight variant because they have different facial expressions. Although I do believe that uh, there have been many, many variants of World of Nintendo Mario. And I think one of them does feature a facial expression like this, but don't quote me on that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's one thing. I, as far as I'm aware, there are only two variants of this Mario. This one and then him in the Fire Flower outfit. While this one has like, I don't know, a kajillion. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's at least half a dozen. Like, wait, there's been, um, there's been the Mario Maker Mario, the, um, Fire Mario, I think they made Ice Mario, Propeller Hat. Yeah, okay, there, there's a lot of variants of this Mario, a lot. Uh, so let's take a look at their faces. Um, if you look specifically at the eyes, this Mario, like, damn, those are real. Like, wow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with the way this Mario's eyes are painted, but you know, like these look like you know toy eyes. They're they're painted. They look like paint. But wow, that pearlescent finish and the multiple paint depths. Like, okay, that's that's impressive. Like, I can get lost in those eyes. Plus, if you look, um, you can see there's some defect. Like, there, you can see where the brown. You can kind of see the pink strokes where it's a little bit weaker there. Well, this is much more crisp. And also his mustache, it's pointier and comes off of his face. While here, the mustache is a little bit rounder and it's part of the head sculpt. You see how it's like attached? See? So, slightly better. Like, it's not, it's not huge. It's not like this one sucks and this one's perfect. Like, um, like, look, even the M is sculpted in while this is more of a tampograph. I mean, like, the bulge where the M emblem goes is sculpted, but the M itself is just a tampograph. Here, both the bulge and the M itself are sculpted parts of the hat. So, yeah, I mean, like, what do you say? Like, the sculpt and the paint job on 
is simply sharper. I mean, you can also see it in the body. It's like you can see, you can see like his buttons are shinier, and uh, and this, and this is where we start. We start to give some points to the to Jack specific. Yeah, you thought I was gonna be giving everything to the to the figure art Mario. I say not because although you do succeed in having a more crisp and cleaner paint job, you fail to have as good a sculpt as him. Because let's take a look. As you can see, the figure art Mario actually has accommodations for his articulation that cut into the into the sculpt lines of his of his outfit. You can especially notice it around here on the hips and um and by how much how much his pants seem to open up. Like, you know, like these are ob like they do they do a decent job hiding, but there's obviously toy joints in there. So so like the like the articulation is breaking up his sculpt. While on here, the articulation is actually blended in much more smoothly. Like if you look at his arms, like I can bend that elbow and there's no obvious breakup from the side. I mean, you, when you look at it from the bottom, then you can see the joint sliding, but from the side, like, like you don't really see anything. Plus you gotta acknowledge that when it's straight, you have a much more coherent sleeve, while when this is straight, like, boom, you have a, a gap for the joint. Um, although, yes, like, although, like, his, his sculpt doesn't hit, yeah, his articulation does less, does less damage to the figure's sculpt as this one does, so you gotta, you gotta acknowledge that. But does that, but how does the articulation itself actually work? Like I said, this Mario has a full ball jointed head so you can get expressive tilt in and on all that. Well, this one, um, the ball joint is so deeply recessed, it's basically just a swivel. But then check this out. You see how Mario has his arms all the way up in a T-pose? That's as far up as figure art Mario's arms can go. So that means that he actually has better shoulder articulation. I didn't think that the cheaper figure would be able to win anywhere in terms of articulation and posability, but there you go. His shoulders are superior. That's because here you have like a ball joint in a cup and like the sculpt of the sleeve hits when you get this high. Here, because it's a pin disc, you can get the arm to go all the way up into a 90 degree T pose. Um, Although the elbow, the elbows do seem to tie. They both get a solid 90 degree and they both have wrist swivels. Yeah, it's only a swivel. Although once you get down to the legs, um, a lot of people complain about how broken up the sculpt is, but that is kind of worth it because like his legs can go out. Granted, his legs can also go out, but then his legs can do that. Yep. That's another thing. Although his sculpting is preserved better here, this Mario can actually sit. Yep. Because of, because of this accommodation they did with the hips, Mario has much more range in his legs when he's in his figure art form. So he's actually able to better pull off I, the um, uh, running and jumping poses which is simply something that this Mario can't do with his hips being so limited. Although ironically, his legs can actually go farther backwards than this one's can. Like that's about as far backwards as this Mario's leg can go. So that's funny. It's funny that this one can, can actually go farther backwards, even though he can't, he can almost, he can barely move his leg forward at all, but he can move it so far backwards. They also both have, um a solid 90 degree bend at the knee. Although, to be fair, this is might be a tiny bit, like this might be, this is a solid 90, well this is like an 85. It's almost 90, but not quite. Although despite the fact that the knee can't bend, the feet are fully ball jointed, meaning um, with a little bit of kajiggering, you can give this Mario a nice wide legged action stance and his feet will be flat and allow for the posability. Well, this guy's foot is just part of the sculpt of, of below the leg. So, you know, 
wide-legged action stances are a little bit more of a challenge for him and his feet aren't going to be completely flat. See that? So in terms of articulation, this guy definitely has better arms, so give him that, but this guy has better everything else. So, you know, it's, um, you, you want to have a, yeah, I guess, I guess it's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to decide. And now, the final verdict. So, final verdict. I think they're both fine. They're both great Mario toys. I mean, this one has a cleaner body sculpt, but this one has a has a more has a more sharply done head and better posability, especially below the waist. This one has better arms, this one has better legs, this one has a crisper pink job, this one has a better overall sculpt. Um, this one is only nine dollars, while this one is twenty dollars. This one comes with stuff, while this one only has a thing. This one has a ton more variants, while this one only has one. And um, whether uh, and whether you, you prefer one or the other is really going to come down to your choice. Uh, I think that they're both fantastic figures, and if I had the option at the time, I might have just gone with this because he's so much less expensive. I mean, this is still a very nice toy, and I don't regret the, the purchase, but when I bought him, he was the only option. Now that they're in competition with each other, like, for, for the most part, you usually just go with this one. Uh, also, like... I know that there's other variants, like the, the uh, Mario Odyssey variant, which has a realistic denim texture to the overalls and a removable hat. That alone might make it a better purchase than this one, even with the better leg articulation. But you know what? Maybe not. Maybe some people really do just want this. After all, he even has a little back panel that you can remove so that you can stick, um, you can put a, a figure art display stand for for aerial poses, uh, this can't do that. I, I just I just realized I forgot to mention that while I was comparing them, so I I wanted to throw it out there. So yeah, like I really can't decide. I can't say one is definitively better than the other. I can say they both have their strong points, they both have their weak points, but overall both are fantastic Mario figures. Although because he's much easier to acquire and um, much simpler in construction. This one is much better for custom fodder. Uh, just go to my buddy Speed Up Jesse's channel. He's trying to make a hundred customs using this Mario figure, and that's a uh, and that's a pretty impressive job. But I admit something that he could pull off because uh, he's just so easy to work with. Anyway, um, I know it might be a little bit disappointing that I'm being such a fence sitter, but I don't want to tell you guys what to decide. It's all up to you. So this is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.